I'm looking to change a few things up here at Mason Woodshop. In my last video, I gave you a tour of what I think is a very efficiently laid out and very well equipped for a hobbyist that is one car garage shop. So it's 20 feet long, 12 feet wide, and I have a lot of tools in here, but it works really well for me. And what I've realized over the last few months though is that my interests in woodworking have changed. Have changed from the more general woodworking, the occasional piece of furniture, occasional piece of cabinetry, cutting boards, charcuterie boards, all that kind of stuff. And now it's almost all about cabinet making. And whether they're built-ins for closets or whether it's for a dining room or whether it's a one-off piece of cabinetry for a kitchen. I haven't done a full kitchen yet. Who knows when that will come. But my interests primarily lie right now in cabinet making, working with a lot of large sheet goods, doing some of the occasional walnut tops or maple or cherry tops for them. And what I've noticed is that while the space in this shop is great, there are a number of tools that have largely gone unused over the past six months. And I think now is the right time going into winter here in Canada to purge some of these tools and to potentially get a couple new ones that really kind of help with that cabinetry passion that, that I'm gaining right now. So in this video, I just want to walk you through a few things that I'm looking to get rid of. It's really going to help justify my decision in the end. And I really want to hear from all of you. How has your passion in woodworking changed? How have you adapted to that? Have you put tools into storage for a while? Did you sell them and buy them back later? And yeah, I'm really just want to share my rationale, my story with this. And I really want to hear from you. So uh, without further ado, let me talk through some of the tools and other items that I am looking to get rid of and what I may be replacing a few of them with. Here we have two of the smaller items that I'm looking to get rid of. So first of all, we have the dovetail jig. So this Porter Cable dovetail jig is one that I've used a couple of times for a few pieces of furniture to make nicely dovetailed drawers and boxes. And I've really been happy with the results overall. But it's something that, other than a few instructional videos that I made earlier this year, that have gained a decent amount of traction on YouTube. So thanks for the feedback on those videos. I really haven't used it. And it's something that does take up enough space. It's kind of always in my mind, should I be using it, should I not? And the reality is that I'm using other types of joinery in all of my cabinet making. So this has essentially been collecting dust for the past six months. And it's something that I really just want somebody else to get um, some enjoyment out of it and get some use out of it. So I will be selling this and I don't think I'll be needing it again. So yeah, Porter Cable Dovetail Jig, it's gonna be going. Next up, we have the Biscuit Joiner. And it's funny watching YouTube videos from woodworkers on the Biscuit Joiner. It seems to be a very divisive tool uh, in this space. I think given that the dominoes here, given that the, there are other forms of joinery. And what I found is that while I was originally using it for alignment on solid wood tops, um, I don't use it anymore. So I either cut grooves and slot things in that way, or I just perfectly edge joint the boards and glue them together. And I haven't had any failures with those. So it really just adds an additional step. And while it can help with, a, with alignment, with the right number of clamps and calls and a few things like that, I really don't need it. And it, while it doesn't take up a ton of room and I've actually been storing it in the basement, I can get a little bit of money for it and it can help fund uh, some of my other tool purchases. So Biscuit Joiner is going. So here we have one of the bigger items that I'm looking to get rid of that will definitely save some floor space in the shop here. And that is my 14 inch Porter Cable bandsaw. This has been a pretty good saw that I bought a four-ish years ago from Lowe's on a really good sale. I have five different blades for it, everything from resaw blade to I think an eighth of an inch uh, fine blade. And I've used it a few times on some home improvement projects, but it hasn't seen a lot of work when it comes to woodworking. So yeah, it, I posted a video earlier this year on how I cleaned it up after it was essentially neglected in the shop for a couple of years. It's in great working condition. I know I'll get a reasonable price for it, which I can put those funds towards purchase of a couple of new tools and really it's going to save a decent amount of room in the shop. So while I definitely do agree that the bandsaw is a great addition to any general woodworking shop, it's just not one of those tools that I need for my cabinet making or some of the other items that I really like to work on. And I also have found that the jigsaw is a tool that I've come around big time on. So I actually posted a video with my 10 worst tool purchases, which has garnered a lot of feedback from the community. And the jigsaw is one of those that's actually starting to see a lot more use in my cabinetry. So anyways, for now, bandsaw is going. 
So on the likely to be sold list, we have the DeWalt DW735 planer. So a lot of woodworkers have these. It's a fantastic planer. It's kind of that perfect mix between the lunchbox, portable planers, and some of the larger floor standing ones. So really, really good one um, for those of you looking to, to buy a planer. I'll even put a link in the description below to this planer specifically. And I really like it, but what I found is that the, the times that I'm using it right now is to plane some boards, flatten some boards, thickness some boards when it comes to making tops for some of the cabinets that I build. And I don't have a jointer. I used to have a six inch floor standing jointer and it just took up far too much room in my one car garage shop. So what I've been using is a planer sled with this uh, planer in order to relatively joint boards. And it works okay. It's not a perfect substitute for a jointer. And what I found again, kind of being space limited, is that there are other options. Mail order lumber in Canada has really become a much more accessible option. Buying finished lumber, not at the home center, but through uh, through some mills that we have locally, isn't that much more expensive than buying rough cut. So if I can get the exact same lumber, lumber that I need, I can get it planed and jointed and ready to go for not that much more, do I wanna save both uh, some floor space by getting this out of the shop and gain some initial or some additional money that I can put towards the purchase of some new tools. And right now I'm leaning towards selling the jointer as well as selling some of the rough cut lumber that I have, which should bring in another few hundred dollars to put towards some of those tool purchases. And finally, we have a couple items that I may sell, but essentially replace with something very similar. So first and foremost, we have my DeWalt cordless track saw. This is one of the reasons why I love cabinet making so much. Working with the track, working with this cordless saw, hooking it up to the Festool dust extractor, and having essentially a dustless cut is something that has really attracted me towards that cabinetry space. And while I do love this, I have been considering moving towards the Festool system for cabinet making. So moving towards a Festool track saw with an MFT3 table, um, with some of the accessories that they have to make some of those repeatable cuts, which also then takes away some of the pressure that I'd have on the table saw and the footprint that the table saw takes up in my small shop. So I'm not necessarily looking to get away from a table saw completely, but do I want to replace this rigid floor standing contractor style table saw with a more portable saw that I can tuck away in a corner? And I think that that's kind of where I'm leaning right now, where if I can swap my DeWalt track saw for a Festool track saw, get that MFT3 table to go with it. I may put this rigid table saw in a corner to see how often I really need to use it. And if I find that I'm not using it that often, I may then move towards one of the portable job site uh, table saws. So that's really where I'm leaning right now with these two tools. So again, not necessarily selling them and not replacing them with something else, but kind of that side grade. Also selling this table saw and moving towards a more portable one would actually allow me to get rid of my dust collector as well, which again would free up some of that floor space. So that's where my thinking is right now. So that's where I stand right now on this pretty big transition for me and my shop. I actually already have a few of the tools listed on a local marketplace. That's the bandsaw, the biscuit joiner, and the dovetail jig. They just haven't seen that much use over the last six months and I really just want to free up some of that floor space, some of that like mental clutter and use some of the money from selling those to acquire a couple of other tools that I'm much more apt to use over the coming years. And that's another big piece of this is my wife and I sat down and kind of planned out of the next five projects or the next couple of years, what are the projects in our house that I am going to be doing? What are the projects that I want to do for others that can sell? And every single one came down to cabinet making or some small projects. So that's really kind of where that small table saw may come in. Um, so I'm definitely curious to hear from everybody watching this. Am I making a very brash move that I'm gonna regret in a few weeks? Have you gone through something similar? And if so, in the end, was it the right decision or was it one that you regretted? Definitely eager to hear from all of you, especially those of you with a small shop like this where you have to juggle space, money, time, all of those sorts of things. So. Give it a thumbs up if you like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and please leave a comment below. I definitely want to take in as much feedback from everybody watching this as possible. So thanks for watching. See you in another video soon.